A few months ago, a furniture builder in Toronto gave me a ton of these walnut scraps. Oh, fantastic. You got three buckets full. All this, these three buckets? Yeah. All right. You can take that, work with it, pull your car around the back. Check out all of this walnut. This is insane. I used 116 of these pieces to make a coffee table. I tried to sell it, but I was in kind of a rush and it was a very unique piece. So I ended up keeping it for myself. It's now in our living room. And I still have four, eight, 12, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40, 42 of these pieces left. They've been sitting around just waiting for the right project. And then a few days ago, I was cleaning up in here, moving around the scraps. And I remembered some comments I got on the coffee table video. A lot of people love the look of the underside of the table where all of the end grain is visible. And I thought to myself, I probably have enough pieces here to make an end grain cutting board. So I did some math and found out that I have exactly enough pieces to make a really big end grain cutting board. If I lose one piece, I'm gonna have to make the board substantially smaller because I'll lose an entire row or column. So I'm gonna have to be very careful throughout this entire project. First things first, we gotta trim every single one of these pieces into a square. Let's do it. Once this is trimmed, it'll only be about 11 and a half inches wide. So I think I'm gonna take one of the ends off to add some width. So that is about 20 inches long, 13 inches wide. That feels like a really nice size. So each one of these has one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, easy. So we just gotta make glue ups that are five pieces long. Sorry about the horizontal bands in that last time lapse. I had my camera set to the wrong frame rate. Believe it or not, I had exactly enough long clamps for this glue up. Boom. So if we were to glue up these pieces just like this, we would end up with a pretty bad cutting board because there's a ton of gaps in between all these pieces. When we glued the segments together, these edges did not form a flat face. So I'm gonna use my jointing jig to flatten these faces on the table saw. This is a super easy thing to set up. I'll link the tutorial in the description. Let's get to it. So I clearly didn't let the glue cure for long enough because three of these stacks broke along the glue joint as I was pushing it through the jointing jig. It probably doesn't help that it's not exactly warm in here, even though it is a relatively mild winter day and I have the propane heater going, but I glued these back together, brought them into the warm house for a full like two and a half hours. So hopefully they're strong enough to make it through the jointing jig. There we go, oh no! Oh my gosh, I just dropped that one. Luckily the glue joint survived. Let that be a lesson to you. Don't rush, it's never worth it. Ooh, look at those tight joints. We did lose a bit of length. The board is now 17 and a half inches long since we took about an eighth of an inch or maybe a little less off of each side of each strip, but this is gonna be so nice.
This time, I'm not taking any chances on the glue up. I'm bringing this thing in the warm house to cure. Ah. Boom, there we go. So the next step is to flatten this thing. And as you might've noticed, this is a little too big to go through my planer, but I have a cheat code. This is a router sled. And if you're not familiar, a router sled allows you to flatten huge pieces of lumber. This particular router sled is made by Clean Cut Woodworking. It's a four foot by eight foot version. So technically I could flatten something the entire span of this table. For now, I only need to take advantage of this tiny portion of the router sled's capacity. But when I was shopping for one, I was thinking, you know what, one day I might wanna make a giant table, so might as well just buy the biggest one he makes. I've only tested this out. This is my first time actually using the router sled. I'm so excited about this tool. This has the potential to be an absolute game changer. You'll see why. To secure this to the table, I'm just gonna use a few dabs of hot glue. And as per usual, when I'm using a new tool for the first time, I'm gonna start on the bottom. So I have a big carbide tipped flattening bit in this router, which should make quick clean work of the cutting board. <sighs> All right, I got my router set just over the surface of the board. PPE on. Let's do this. There we go, one perfectly flat side and very smooth too. Now you can see the reason why I put the glue on the sides so that we can scrape it off. Ooh, that is some strong hot glue. Use my blowtorch to soften the glue a little bit. So I think with that, I should be able to, oh, I think I need to use a little less hot glue on the other side. Come on. How is this still attached? Oh, whoops. <laughs> Good thing we're gonna cut that off anyway. Ah, nope. Ugh, I was afraid that this would happen. You know what, I wonder, maybe if I just like... Ha, ah, there we go. All right. <laughs> this side, I'm only putting hot glue on the edges. All right, side number two, let's do it. Whew. I really need to get dust collection set up. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Boom, there we go. So on this one, I did a finishing pass in this direction, which pretty much got rid of the lines. You can see the difference between this side where my last pass was this way and this side where it feels like it's already sanded up to like 100 grit. So that router sled work drastically cut down on the amount of sanding that we're gonna have to do. So these edges did not turn out very nice. I don't know if you can see it, but they are not square. <laughs> I probably need to invest in a track saw, but in the meantime, I'm gonna clean these up on the table saw. Let's do it. There we go, much better. You know what time it is. That carbide bit in the router sled definitely paid off because it only took 15 minutes to sand this thing up to 220 grit. Look at that, that is looking so good. Next step is really gonna add a level of refinement to this board. I'm gonna add a quarter inch round over to all of the edges. Let's do it. Yeah. 
beautiful. All right, just a few more finishing touches before this thing is ready to sell. Next step, I wanna add my branding to the back of the board. All right, here we go. Nice uniform pressure, flat. Woo, there we go. A little bit of excess burning, but that should fade away with some sanding. So wetting the wood here is gonna do double duty of getting the sawdust out of our burning and raising the grain. This causes the wood fibers on the surface of the wood to swell. When that dries, we can sand off the swollen fibers and that will give us a super smooth finish. Oh, this is gonna look so good. So I gave the board a final sanding with 220 grit and we are finally ready for finish. This is a two to one mineral oil beeswax blend that I made myself. It took me about 15 minutes to make 921 grams of this. So after we apply the finish, I'll weigh the container and we'll figure out how much we used. Now I'll use my blowtorch to liquefy the beeswax. This will even out the finish and help it soak into the wood. So this has been sitting for about an hour and now I can go ahead and wipe off the excess and buff this to a shine. All right, final step is to add on some non-skid feet. Can locate those with my corner jig. Boom, there we go. So the cutting board is done and now it is time to actually sell this thing. I took some nice photos and made four sale posts on Instagram and YouTube community. That whole process took 50 minutes, bringing our running total to four hours and 55 minutes. Of course, I still have to package and ship this thing. And based on my last cutting board project, I'm estimating that'll take around 30 minutes. That brings our total time spent on this project to five hours and 25 minutes. To figure out our sale price, I'm gonna use the hourly rate on my last cutting board project as a guide. That was $56 an hour, if I remember correctly, but we also need to subtract our material costs. So the walnut obviously was free. We probably used around $5 in glue. The cutting board feet were $4 and then the wood finish. If you remember, it took 15 minutes to make 921 grams of my DIY wood butter. We used 21 grams to finish the cutting board. The material cost to make 21 grams of wood butter is 63 cents and the time cost 15 minutes times $58 an hour times 21 grams divided by 921 grams, 33 cents. It cost under a dollar in finish. Moral of the story, it is very worth it to make large batches of finish yourself. You save so much money. So that brings our total material cost to an even $10. And if we apply that hourly rate of $58, that gives us a sale price of $325 Canadian or $240 US. You know, that's an expensive cutting board, but considering how fast the last one sold, I'm feeling pretty confident that this one's gonna sell too. You only need one buyer. So the posts are live and now we wait. So I'm gonna be honest, I was spoiled by the sale of my last cutting board project. When I did that project, I made the first sale post at 5 p.m. and I woke up the next morning to three people who wanted to buy the board. For this one, I also made the post at around 5 p.m., went to bed, and I woke up to no offers of people wanting to buy the board. Now, this is kind of to be expected. It is more expensive. More expensive things tend to take longer to sell. I've learned that the hard way. But you know, still, if something works out really well, you have high expectations. So I come to terms that this board probably won't sell within a day like the last one did, 
but then a couple hours later, I get a DM from someone who seems very interested in the board. They end up never getting back to me. Couple more hours passed, another person texts me, seems very interested in the board, but again, once I respond, they never respond back. A few more hours pass and I get a text from Ross in Singapore who is committed to buying the board. We go back and forth, he's okay for paying for shipping. Boom, deal is done. Packed up the board, dropped it off the post office and it is headed halfway across the world. Ross, your board is on the way. The power of social media to connect with people all over the world and do business with them is amazing. I am so grateful. I am so grateful. If you're curious about the 1000 CD project and other stuff that's going on in the background, you can gain exclusive access to the behind the scenes Instagram page by supporting this channel on Patreon. I wanna give a special thank you to my top supporter on Patreon, my mom, Kathy Kurt. Thanks mom, I love you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.